Hi everyone, Cheyenne with Sew Boutique, and today we're going to do a pattern review and a little bit of a sew along for the Anytime Topper, which is a recently released pattern by Amy Berrickman. What's really fun about this pattern is we can actually adapt the pattern because it's so simple, but we can adapt the pattern to the rayon, which I'm wearing, to our double border rayon. So it can be a border batik. It can be our linen. It can be our cotton. It can be our jersey knit. And even the project we're going to do today is our rayon wraps, which are a completed scarf slash wrap and so we're going to turn that into an anytime topper but before we get working on that specific project i really want to talk to you a little bit about the pattern and some specifics behind it i'm going to describe the pattern real quickly and then we're going to get to some specifics about sizing and how we're going to go about making one the pattern itself is a fold out pattern that gives you guidelines and instructions and steps for making this simple topper. And you're gonna say, well, of course, obviously. What I just showed you was the entire pattern, which is the fact that there are no patterns that you cut out. There's no front and a neckline and a top, a back and a shoulder and a um, sleeve, anything like that. It is based off of the structure of a front panel, a front panel, a back panel, that's a rectangle. The front and the back are sewn together at the shoulder. There's a really interesting, fun detail of a pleat at the shoulder. And then there is no sleeve. It's an illusion of a sleeve where this rectangle, we measure in and down, and there's a stitch line right here that gives us this really fluid illusion of a side seam and a sleeve, which there isn't. So it's basically three pieces of fabric sewn together to make this amazing anytime topper. The pattern is written for two things. It is written for running yardage, like our rayon or our jersey or our linen, um, any yardage that you have at home. And it's also written for a completed item. Let's say, for example, you have a tablecloth at home that you absolutely love and you think that would be an amazing jacket or an amazing wrap or something that you want to convert into a piece of garment that um, fits your style and the image that you want to project. Well, that tablecloth can be an anytime topper. And Amy takes you through the steps to measure and create the topper using bandanas, toweling, tablecloths, scarves. What else do we have in here? <laughs> but basically anything that your mind creates. And so that's why I thought I could make this garment out of rayon, first and foremost, because it's easy and the drape is spectacular. Um, which is what I did this morning. I cre Seriously, I had this fabric at home. I had already pre-washed it, and it's our Wisp motif in the shade of Merlot, pre-washed. I had two and a half yards of it, which was way too much, but I used it anyway. And I love this topper. So we'll talk about that. And then I'm also going to take you through the option of making an anytime topper using one of our rayon wraps. This is a finished item. It's a scarf, it's a wrap. This is, um, as I said, it's rayon and it measures 45 inches wide by 72 inches long and it's finished with tassels. So we're gonna convert one of our rayon wraps into the Anytime Topper. And it couldn't be more simple and I'm so excited to do this just to see how it all turns out. So let's talk a little bit about sizing and how to read this pattern and things to look for. Um, 
the sizing of this pattern is not like you would see for any other garment pattern where there's a zero, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, whatever it happens to be. It is, there are two size groupings. One is small to large and one is extra large to three XL. We all know our body styles and what we believe our sizes are. And so you have to take it upon yourself to group yourself into one of those two um, size ranges. But there is a hint and a trick to this, which took me a little bit to kind of really internalize. On the front page, and I'm gonna point this out, down in the lower corner is where all of the sizes are listed. And it's not really giving you the dimensions of who you are. Like if I were to measure myself, I have a 39 bust and I have a whatever waist and I have a whatever hips. It doesn't have any of that. It will show you how wide each piece is that we cut to make the garment. So what I went by was the back piece. How much yardage or what was the measurement of the width of the back piece of this garment? That told me how wide or how full this was going to fit on my frame. The other variable is length. So I'm wearing the 27 and a half inch long version of this and it stops kind of right, right under my bum as they say. And so that is 27 and a half is about my preference, I guess. I like it to be that far. And medium length is 33 and a half. So that's six inches longer. So now we're getting down into kind of a, kind of a tunic length. And then the long length is a 40 and a half inches, which is another um, seven inches longer, which is getting above the knee and a very long tunic, tunic length. It's not really a dress length. It's more of a tunic length. So you know your style and you know what you like your length of your jackets to be. So if, you're, if you don't quite know for sure, find your favorite jacket, measure that back panel and go from there. Right. So on the back cover of this, uh, pattern is your yardage for the the two size groupings and the three lengths. So you can see how much yardage she's suggesting that you buy. Just know that if you're dealing with 45 inch wide fabric, you can, you base it off twice the length of your garment. That's your yardage. So if I need, if I wanted mine to be 27 and a half, I made mine 27. So 27 and 27 is a yard and a half because you can get two of your fronts and your back out of the two lengths. Okay. okay. So enough of me chatting. Let's get going on our project and I'm going to jump over to our little sewing area and we're going to start making the anytime topper. We are ready to make our project and the version of this anytime topper that I'm going to make is from our rayon wrap and it's a completed wrap. Let me show it to you. It is, let me bring it up on this table here. This is the Copen blue color, by the way, and it's available in several colorways, um, but it has a tasseled finish edge on both ends and it's 72 inches wide. It's really wide. This will become our length of our anytime topper. It is 45 inches wide. Okay. So this is in theory, the same width as our batik rayon, which is what I made this anytime topper out of. Okay. So I'm going to follow the same exact um, steps that I made this one out of <laughs> and how I made this one to make this wrap. The only difference, of course, will be that this is going to be longer because I want to use every bit of it. I'm not going to cut out the center of it to make it shorter. I'm going to make it the length of this particular wrap. With the rayon, as most of you know who have purchased our rayon, we snip and tear our rayon to the order that you place with us. So let's say, for example, you order three yards of fabric or you're gonna order a yard and a half to make your anytime topper. We measure a yard and a half, we snip it and we tear it. 
Well, that is what I do to make straight garments like this. Each one of these pieces is a rectangle. So we have a front panel and we're gonna make a, the smallest size group for whatever length this happens to be. Simply follow the exact measurements that are in this pattern to make your version of this anytime topper. So let's get started. I am going to take this wrap and I'm gonna cut it in half. And I'm just gonna hold both of these together here for my middle and I'm going to snip. And the reason I'm cutting them in half is because, let's envision this for one moment, this is going to be the top and the back of my um, Anytime Topper. I'm not gonna reduce the length of it, I am just gonna let it be. So the tassels themselves will be my hem, okay? It is going to be long, but I wanna show you how fun this can be. If you don't want it that long and you decide to make this version, then simply decide on how long you want your version to be, get your tape measure and measure up from your hem to the length you want, snip it and tear. And now you've got your two pieces that you need, one for the back, one for the front panels that I'll show you what to do with next. I want mine as long as I can. And so I'm just gonna snip it right in half. And what do we do when we snip? Because rayon is hard to just straighten and cut with a rotary cutter. We don't wanna do that. We wanna tear it. Okay. So now we have, I'm gonna set one piece aside. So now we have two pieces and this is going to be, I'm gonna start with the back piece. This is going to be the back piece. And I will tell you this, because I have to make this narrower, I will be running my rolled hem along both long edges to make it even. Even though this is a finished edge, a finished salvage, as I, if I could put it that way, I still wanna make it look exactly the same as the cut side. So I'm going to measure 36 and a half inches. Let me go over here. And I'm going to snip again because it's one big rectangle. And I'm gonna tear through my tassels. And now I have a little extra piece of rayon that I have to figure out what to do with. And I'll have a couple of those. So now here is my back piece. It measures 36 and a half inches wide by whatever length it is. I'm gonna set this aside. Now let's make the front pieces. I need to tear two pieces from this, this side here. So. We're gonna measure, and what did I say, 18 and a half inches? We're gonna measure 18 and a half. There is one panel for the front and a second, 18 and a half. And now we have this little extra piece as well. What am I gonna do with those? Hmm. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do now is we're gonna go to our serger. And if you feel more comfortable using your sewing machine, um, feel free to do that. And then don't, <laughs> Don't follow my measurements, but follow the measurements in the pattern so that you're doing the right hem finish length 
um, to make this correct. But I'm going to go to my serger once I fix the thread and get it, this is the right thread. And I'm going to roll, do my rolled hem down both sides of my front two panels and then the two sides down my back panel, okay? The next step in here is to finish the hem. So if you're not using one of our scarves or a finished um, scarf for tablecloth or something that already has a finished hem to it, also take a moment and finish your hem. We want to have all of the sides except for where we attach our shoulders together. We want everything else finished and ready to go. So let's take a minute. I'm back. <laughs> the edges, the long edges of both the front panel and the back panel are now surged. And the next step we have is we're going to create the pleat that is at the top shoulder of the front panels. And then we're going to position the front and the back right sides together. And we're going to create our shoulder seam. So the first thing here is I want to make sure I have my right side. Okay, the pleat is very, very simple. I have a grid on my uh, table here, so it's easy for me to do this. Otherwise, grab yourself um, a ruler and some pins. I'm gonna just set that here. But we wanna measure in four inches from the center front of our panel and place a pin. Measure another three inches or to seven inches over and place another pin. Take your first pin and pull it on top of the second pin. And what that does, once you straighten out the edge here running across the top, is you've got your inch and a half pleat. So I just simply move a pin over and now I've got my pleat right there. Okay, do the same thing on the other front panel and I I think I have to flip this one around here. Okay, so from the center over, four inches, put a pin, three more inches, put a pin, and now move your first pin to the top of the second pin and you've got your pleat. And make, just make sure that the top edge is lined up and move your pins to actually secure that pleat. Okay, so now both fronts have our pleats. Now what we need to do is with right sides together, I want to make sure I have, yep, this is the back piece right on the, on the bottom here. So I'm going to move this guy, but right sides together, I have to switch sides. There and there. It's really hard sometimes with a batik because both, both sides of a, of a batik are identical. You can't tell the difference right from wrong, which is another great reason to use a batik for this uh, anytime topper because you don't see a wrong side to the fabric anywhere. So here we go. We're going to pin at the long shoulder here all the way across in a couple of spots so that our next step is to use our three-eighths of an inch seam allowance across the top shoulder here. This is something that you can do on your um, sewing machine. It doesn't matter. I am going to go back to my serger and I'm changing the stitch to be a three thread overlock because I want it to be a little bit more secure and I want to also finish the edge at the same time. I want it all to be secure. So if you're not using a serger, take a moment to either zigzag the edge or do whatever you like to do to finish the edge of this rayon because it was torn. And even if it wasn't torn, the minute you start washing this, um, it will ravel. So definitely take a moment. You can also create a French seam right along this top as well. It's so easy to just finish it the way you like to finish your seams. So um, take a moment to do that. I'm just gonna finish pinning here. 
and then the top is all stitched. So we have our seam that is joining, hopefully you can see this, that is joining the back and the front, and there's our pleat. And, you know, I didn't mention this before, but you're going to have, let me measure this, about a five to six inch opening, which is really the back of your neck. So that's where the opening is going to be on this jacket. The next step, as I mentioned, is to press, regardless of how you finished your uh, seam, we're going to press the seam to the back. And I'm gonna take a minute to do that here. We'll press it. And then we're gonna top stitch it because even though this looks fine, it looks beautiful, it looks finished because it was surged or whatever method you used, it really will be nice if we can take this center section because that only has our surging stitch on it. We wanna fold this towards the back and then we're going to top stitch from each edge okay all the way across the top and it finishes that neckline beautifully so let's press this down towards the back and i have to get rid of any little stray threads here so get rid of all those and no need to press the pleat we're just trying to press the seam flat now through the middle as well got to get rid of my threads. There we go. And we'll press it. And again, this was a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. If you ended up with a little more or a little less, no worries. Okay. And everything is lining up at the edge here, which is the edge of your garment okay so now and i did say earlier that i wasn't going to use my traditional sewing machine but i do have to do that to do my top stitching so i'm going to go back and top stitch right along the edge here and then we have one step left okay i love how that top stitching looks and i think um you are absolutely going to too it is I think I'm going to have to do some close-ups later, but it's really a beautiful way to finish off the top and the neckline and everything is just finished beautifully. So we have one last, well, two last steps. Um, let's fold this in half. And now we're going to add what I kind of describe as the kind of a fake armhole. So we're going to add our little positioning here for that stitching. Now, I have a lot of thread <laughs> tails that I have to clip, um, but the thread from the sewing machine here, I will clip. The thread that is from my serger, I do take a needle and I will work it back into the seam. And then I use the um, fray check to seal anything at the edges after I've cut my threads. Um, so make sure you have three, uh, um, fray check, why I'm stuck on that word, fray check to make sure that nothing um, unravels. It's just a great little accessory to always have in your, your tool bag. But I will go back to every single place that I have an end of my serger thread and take a needle um, I use those needles that have the open end to them where you can you can just pop the thread in and then I take it through. It's the easiest way to finish off your threads. That is the last step. So before I do that, let's lay this on the table. Now I have my shoulder up here and that is folded. I'm gonna line up my side edges here, okay? and make sure that all of this is flat. Okay. Now, grab your ruler and a marking pencil and some pins. What is going to, I'm gonna use, 
I think I'm going to use white. It'll be the easiest thing for me to show and measure down from the shoulder. That's my first pin mark. Okay. So now I have that measuring down another four inches straight from that dot that you placed and staying three inch, three and a half inches in from the edge, place another dot. Okay. Now, I am going to, because I'm not so great at just always staying straight, I'm going to place a kind of a, a light line here going between these two pins. Okay. So we're going to stitch one simple line of stitching between these two points. Back stitch at each edge, and that becomes our faux side seam where we have our opening to our arm and the rest becomes in a beautiful drape. So do this on both sides so that we have equal sides and then we'll come back and we'll try this on. Okay, I absolutely love this, this um, anytime topper that we made out of our Batik Rayon wraps. And um, so I'm gonna have to like step a little bit further back so that you can see how long it is. It's really beautiful. And I can see wearing this with um, boots in the wintertime, turtleneck, just a really, really nice classy look. I just think it will be beautiful. And the tassels at the end, I think are just, adds a little bit of flair to the wrap. And I just love the whole concept of this. So again, these Batik Rayon wraps were 72 inches wide. Um, so that is actually, that's a long version of this um, Anytime Topper. And I think you're going to love it. So earlier you saw me wear, while I was uh, stitching this one up, um, the Rayon version, which was the small to large size grouping in the shortest um, recommendation which was 27 inches now you can make as I've said a thousand times you can make these any um, length or width fullness that you would like um, so just follow the instructions on how to add your pleats how to add your shoulder seam and how to add your faux side seam and you have your anytime topper out of your favorite fabric for yardage and follow the yard goods um, section in the pattern or if you do have something like a tablecloth or something vintage or you decide to try one of our uh, batik rayon wraps you'll know how to do it thank you amy for this really really lovely pattern and it is it's perfect for something quick and something elegant and something special for yourself or for a friend so I hope you enjoy this video and keep sewing, smiling, and indeed sharing.